Hi guys, Dr. Linda Kramer. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, um, May 6 is today for me here in Brisbane, Australia. It was on the 6th of May 2001 when I wasn't feeling the best that day. I was struggling with stress. I was realizing um, my relationship with my ex wasn't working out. He had his own ideals, okay, his own beliefs, etc. And I knew that we were tethering, tethering by a string in our relationship. I went to bed and it was about two o'clock in the morning. So I always say my death day was the 6th of May, um, even though and it was technically on the 7th because it was the night of the 6th of May that I um, went to bed. I woke up, I managed to get to the toilet considering I couldn't breathe, um, sat on the toilet, went to sleep. There was no pain. It was just like going to sleep. And that's what scares me the most you know how often do we just go to sleep and my event occurred um so today's the anniversary i want to go into today about things over the last 21 years so this is a positive message for everybody watching today okay um for those who haven't watched me before here is my 168 page medical file from the hospital with all my ECGs and other information in as I just flick through um, with what happened to me when I was in hospital okay um, obviously I blank out my information on the front because it's private you don't need to know my date of birth you don't need to know my address at the time and most of all you certainly don't need to know any of the details regarding my ex-husband and or his involvement in this matter okay um, so in here I've got the ambulance reports, ambulances arrived, they found me non-responsive, um, I was not breathing at that point, they did not have a defibrillator so they called the ALS which is the um, advance crew who arrived about 10 minutes later and they came in with a defib and they got a heartbeat. So that's why I say I was clinically dead for 14 minutes. Um, so that's from the time that the first paramedics arrived at the scene until the second crew came with their defibrillator. So we've also got to account into that that my husband woke up um, two o'clock in the morning. Um, he reckons that he heard a banging on the wall, but that wasn't me because I remember going to sleep. I can actually close my eyes and still see the bathroom where I was just sitting on the toilet. Um, I know I did not bang on the wall and he woke up came and found me lying on the floor and I was already blue so how long was I technically dead I only say what the um, official records say which was 14 minutes but it could have been an hour I don't know okay um, so what happened when I went home heaven whatever you want to call it um, Let's just go there with some lessons, okay? Over the past 21 years, it's been a great honor. It's been a privilege. It's been a gift that not only did I wake up, um, yes, I've got physical injuries, um, but they are merely a physical form of identifying that I've been through bad stuff in my life, okay? Um, right now today I've got a sprained wrist I've had it now since Monday and today's Friday so about five days I've had a sprained wrist one of the things that does play up is this vein on my hand um, I don't know if you can see it but this vein today is extreme it's been sore all week um, and I've also got some other swelling in here as well up through here um, where and in here um, they, I had seven drips just in this hand. So there's my scars. You can see from all the, you can see, um, I can still show you needle marks. There's one here. There's a big white scar here that I've got. That's a needle drip that I've had in. Um, 
up through my arm. Look, I had drips in here. I had, um, I've still got a white mark here that you can see just there. That's where I had a drip. Okay, I had a drip in this vein up here. Um, let me just see because I've still got, I've got a drip mark there and I've got a drip mark there. On this hand, I've got drip marks here. Um, look at the veins on this hand. Look at all the scarring where they've put drips in here. There's a big one here. Um, so that was just on my hand. I had drips in my thighs. Um, they also um, used a restraint on me because I was convulsing while I was on life support in ICU. So on my leg, I like showing my scars, right? Here on my leg, that's the scar there where they attached a, like a stirrup, bandage whatever you want to call it restraint because I've got the restraint forms in there where they use restraint so it's all verified in all my 168 page medical file so how often do I think about the day I died every single day every single day I think about death every single day I go to bed and it's will I wake up this time it does daunt me some nights, and I'll be honest today, okay? I want you to see me raw that I have spent a lot of time over the past 21 years training, edu education, research, etc. Um, how to be a better person, so that incorporates my life coaching qualifications. Um, I've done a CPD, um, Cognitive Behaviour Therapy course, so I'm a practitioner in that. Um, I've done a lot of research, not only on what I went through, but it's also the messages then that I can give to others. So let's have a look at the last 21 years for me. What was my life like? My physical being, I do have a lot of medical problems. One is my neck, because I broke my neck when I was 20, and that could be why I've got a sprained hand today. Okay, look, you can see how swollen it all is. Um, so I've actually got a glove. <laughs> I've got to go and buy myself one of those proper wrist guards. But I just put on my little glove because it keeps my wrist straight so I don't bend it and use it. Okay. Um, my neck plays up constantly. It does hurt because C2, C3 in my neck are not connected. So I have to have massages about once a week. I've got some really cool massage plug in the wall type things that I can put on my neck and shoulders etc um, the muscles in my neck always play up look how look how tense they are so I love getting massages here in my neck um, I get a lot of issues with my feet obviously because I've had drips all over me and um, I do get swelling in my ankles so it's not fun when we say oh we've had a near-death experience okay it's never fun and I say to people that if this was a good event everybody would sign up for it right but it wasn't a good event the only good thing about it was where I went waking up was horrible I was in hospital for a week when I woke up and I remember I went into the bathroom area at the toilet they gave me a shaver so I could shave my legs and as I went up my leg with the shaver every pore started to bleed I started screaming the nurse ran in and said what's going on I said my god look at the blood and she said well that's because you've been in ICU and all your muscles have collapsed so it's not fun guys what we go through okay so if you do hear people's NDE stories near-death experiences please know that we are warriors we are so strong within our souls that we allow what happens to our bodies because it's a testimony or a testament that we've been through all these physical struggles okay some people have ongoing health issues constantly after they've had an NDE okay um, there's many people that come out from an NDE and they've had strokes, heart attacks or quadriplegics in wheelchairs. They use walking frames, etc., walking sticks, or they can't see anymore. Okay. 
Um, I've always been short-sighted, so I've always worn glasses all my life. So we've got to take away that physical, emotional trauma that we've been through, okay? Today, my hand is aching. Now, I do have a high pain tolerance, but if I had to say between 1 and 10 today, because this is a scale they use with pain, 1 out of 10, if 10 is the worst pain, they generally say childbirth is an 8. I would say this is about a 6. It's making my eyes water because I've had this since Monday now and it's quite painful. So today's the worst day of it. So I've been massaging my neck with the massager and it's actually making it feel a bit better. So I put deep heat on my neck and ice packs, etc. So to um, go from hot to cold, etc. Because hello, I was a first aid trainer. Um, for a few years as well so we get past this physical and we look at what we learned what have we accomplished and when we even say accomplishments in our lives it doesn't mean oh I got a promotion at work and then I got another promotion and then another promotion so now I'm the CEO of the company that's not an accomplishment okay because one thing I always say is titles and job descriptions mean butt kiss when we go home. So what are accomplishes? accomplishments? Okay. An accomplishment could be simply smiling at a stranger. It could be simply answering the phone when a friend rings and they say, oh my God, I've got this drama today. Can you give me some emotional support? So they're all the accomplishments that we must look out for when we've had these deathly experiences, okay? We offer hope to others that when we go home, and look, I've got all my photos here. So that's the book cover of my book, by the way, when I was standing there doing my life review with the big three that I call them, the big three. What did I learn this day? I learned perspective. I learned to judge myself for my actions to others the other day classic example my neighbor came over and she said my parrot got out I opened um, the front door opened and my bird escaped so I actually spent about four hours that day outside yelling out its name I took out bird food um, honey on bread trying to call this bird in for her why did I do that? Because I put myself into her shoes, which is her perspective. If it was me and I'd lost something, because she was pretty emotional, she was crying, unlike a certain Aquaman starlet at this point who can't even cry on the stand. Oops, why did I even say that? Because I'm watching it, by the way. Um, the tears were running down her face. She was so distraught over her bird escaping. So, of course... I put myself into her shoes. She would want others to be out there searching. Look at when children go missing and all these people flock around and come out and say, I'm going to help you search for your child. Is it any different if it's a child or a bird? In their eyes, it's not. Okay? It's not. A bird is just as important, just as relevant, just as important I'll just stay with stay with important it's just as important that we search out for this bird obviously I did not find the bird okay he's gone off to find happy better pastures but at the end of the day I tried my best and that's what we learn when we go up to heaven or out to heaven I should say because it's not up it's out when we go out to heaven it's learning to put yourself into the other person's shoes. How would that person feel if I do this today? How will the other person react emotionally? Because it is all emotion. That's what creates energy, which is frequency, which is energy, right? Currency. So how would others feel about how I feel to them? If I'm nasty to somebody... How will they feel? Will they like it? And is that the sort of person that I want to be? Where I create negativity 
in others. I know, don't want to be that person, okay? I'm not that person. I can't be that person. So this is where we look at other people in our lives, other animals even, okay? Animals, okay? I have these containers in my house where I go around and catch flies and I take them outside and release them, okay? It's like a Chinese takeaway container with a clipboard. So I catch them and I'll take them outside. Why don't I use fly spray? Because I now understand fly spray on a fly makes them convulse. That's why flies go, (laughs) they're actually having a heart attack and convulsing. And it's painful, excruciatingly painful for them. Would I want a fly to go through that? So when we put ourselves into their perspective and you say, would I want somebody to spray me with this stuff where I am rotating in for two, three minutes, convulsing from a heart attack? I wouldn't want that. So I don't even kill flies now or other little things. Spiders, I let them live. Okay, I've got so many spiders in my house because I don't want to hurt them. Because if I was in their shoes, I wouldn't want somebody to hurt me. So we put ourselves into that perspective. Then we think also, what are the opportunities that I can give other people? Because serving others is the big message that we all get when we go home. Serving others. It doesn't mean you've got to actually sit there with your serving clothes on and your big tray and you're serving them food. It means how can we make other people feel good? How can we? A simple smile at a stranger is sufficient. A simple answering up your fu- answering your phone when someone rings, that's sufficient. Okay? And it's all those brownie points that we do earn in heaven when we're going through our life review. Okay? So this was a photo of my life review where this container was full of all my memories. Even when I was hurting an, um, a cat when I was a child, I had to become the cat and feel the pain of what the little human girl, which was Linda, what she was doing to me because I was now the cat. So I explain all this in my book, Five Years to Heaven and the Teachings of Heaven. Okay. Oh, this hurts my arm is pretty sore today okay so my book five years in heaven the teachings of heaven you can see how thick it is okay it's 369 pages it's on lulu the links below if you do want a copy so the first half of the book is my near-death experience and i've just opened it up ironically to reincarnation what is reincarnation in my belief my personal opinion from what i got taught from my great 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 grandmother She said, if we don't learn our lessons, we come back through reincarnation to learn them again. Some people have to come here 10,000 times to learn one lesson. And there's thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of lessons. So how many lifetimes do we have to go through (laughs) just to learn one lesson? Okay, That could be something just simply as how to be happy. So they put us into these positions where we suffer trauma do we get depressed do we blame others for what happened to us or do we use that as an opportunity because it's all opportunities where we can say thank you thank you for giving me this opportunity where I can learn a lesson okay so today is my death day anniversary of when I died what's my day going to be like today I am so grateful. There you go. I am. That's the first thing that comes out. I am so appreciative that the last 21 days, 21 years for me, has been a golden opportunity where I can demonstrate to others what it was like up there. I can give people hope. I can give them my truth about what I saw based on the thousands of other NDEs that I've read over the years. I can give them the peace that comes that knowing that everything will be okay because everything does happen for a reason. What powerful words for today, the 6th of May 2022. 
So when we look at our lives and we sit there thinking, oh my God, my life's going down the toilet. Sit there Mm. and say, is this an opportunity where I can grow, where I can learn something new, or I can change a negative behavior and turn it into something worthwhile? And most of all, how can I then utilize this information and use it for the service of others? Big words, isn't it? So I hope that you've liked this one today. Um, Yeah, I'm going to do some more videos later today. So stick around. Um, I've got to go rest my arm because it's quite painful. I want to sit there with my um, massager on. Hello, it's rainy here in Brisbane today. It's currently 21 Celsius. Gosh, considering we've just had three months of over 30 to 35 Celsius. So today's a nice cool day. I am in appreciation mode today. And that's why I'm wearing my shirt. (laughs) I love this nighty. It's a nighty, this one. I'm the gift that keeps on giving. I saw this in the shop and I thought, wow, it's red. What does it say? I'm the gift that keeps on giving. And that's what I want to do with these videos. So please know, guys, if you've got any questions, any concerns, my email is below. Okay, I get up every morning and read my emails. So email me any questions you've got about heaven, any questions about life lessons, life contracts, reincarnation, our life review, what are angels, crystals, etc. Okay, because I do have some videos that I'm getting through. Okay, about questions about heaven. So I hope that you just appreciate this one today with my honesty and rawness that don't be proud of people who've had NDEs because their physical bodies would be probably hurting a lot. But instead of being proud of who they are for what they've been through, more so appreciate the gifts that they offer through their words and actions what a way to leave today's video I'm going to leave it there appreciate what end of years say and their actions have a good day guys and I'll talk to you all soon bye To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.